Hey everybody, Susie Q here at Q Aquatics, and today we're going to take a closer look at my orb. So what I did is I set this up about three or four weeks ago, and I had crushed coral to the bottom so I could raise the pH a little bit because I decided on what fish I wanted. Let's go take a closer look. So I got guppy grass on top. I had crushed coral on the bottom. I got some caves going on. And I'm about to add some shells. Would you like to take a guess at to what kind of fish I'm putting in here? A little fairy cichlid, also known as brochardi. So we're gonna take a look. They do have two different caves. And I'm going to add some shells so they can take their choice. And then I'm going to add a couple more plants. Let's take a closer look. So the Brashardi is a cichlid that comes from Lake Tanganyika. Let me tell you a little bit about these uh, gorgeous cichlids. I don't know if it's a Brashardi or a Bucardi, Neolampologus Brashardi. That's what I call it anyway. They go by many different names. Um, it's also known as the fairy cichlid, the princess of Burundi, and, it, and it's called that because of the beautiful finnage. I mean, it's long, it's flowing, it's so graceful. So the Brashardi comes from Lake Tanganyika, and that's why I added the crushed coral to the bottom to get the pH up over 8.3, 8.5. And because these guys are substrate spawners, that's why I put the crushed coral and the sand on the bottom of the tank instead of um, having it a dirty tank. They are schooling fish, but this tank is way too small for schooling fish. So if these guys don't mate, then I'll probably put them in another tank with about six other ones. I went to my local fish store and they only had one male and one female. So I bought them. They don't, they don't really like large water changes. So I'll do smaller water changes every week. So now I'm going to have to move the light well, I put some of these shells in. Now, let me show you a little trick I, I found, I heard from Rachel, Rachel O'Leary. So as I'm putting shells in, and these shells are, are washed off, I'm going to kind of flip it around. I don't know if you can see this yet. I'm going to keep turning it so that there's absolutely no air bubbles in this shell. And I'm just going to keep turning it. Let's see if I can, because if you get, an air pocket in there that could be horrible if the fish goes inside or the fry goes inside and there's an air pocket they might get stuck in there so let me see if you can see this so i go in where to go here we go and i just keep turning it around like this till all the air is out and if all the air is out then it will absolutely sink to the bottom let's do a couple more so I got up here and I just see all those air bubbles coming out. And I just keep turning. Now if there's air bubbles in there, they won't sink to the bottom as well. Now all these shells, I, I got these online. So I washed them first. I'll just put a couple more in here. I really like how the shells look in this. Not only do they have their caves, but they're gonna have their shells. So they get to pick and choose where they go, where they hide. So let's see if we can see some of them. Let me put this up top. And I think when I put the light up top, they all started hiding. Oh, there's one. Here's his nose. Oh, there's another one. Oh. Yeah, I didn't think they were this shy, but it must be the light is very irritating to them.
I gotta say that these shells look ginormous inside this orb, but it's just that fisheye <laughs> view. They're really not that as big as, well, I guess they are that big. So that is what I decided to put in my orb. I've got some brochardi in there and hopefully they will love it. Well, thanks for coming along while I fill up my bio orb with these beautiful cichlids. Neo Lampralogus Burchardi. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm thinking I'm going to want to set up a whole school of them somewhere else as well. I really like them. See you next time.